Okay, in this video we're going to have a look at um, slight frequency adjustments and the effect that that has on the phase relationship between the primary and secondary's current. Um, what we're going to do is make small changes and shift the secondary's current um, in relation to that of the current flowing through the primary coil. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so in this setup here, it's the same setup. We've shortened our little bar a bit more to bring up the frequency a bit higher. Um, but because I am limited uh, by the coil and the power that my function generator can deliver to that coil, um, we are limited to how far our uh, little oscillator there can oscillate, as in its forward and backwards motion. But nonetheless, um, we've managed to raise the frequency up to close to uh, 40 Hertz from our 31 we had before and that's made quite a bit of difference uh, more than I would expect that small change in frequency to make but nonetheless uh, we'll get on with this little um, bit of the uh, project up here we have our CVR it's a 3 ohm CVR that's on the primary coil uh, and that will show us the current flowing into the primary coil and that is the blue channel on the scope or channel 2. Channel 1 on the scope um, that is down here I'm sure you can see that um, this is our secondary windings down here hooked onto our little um, multi-resistor selector doiki um, as you can see we are once again on our 5 ohm load um, so we have a pure resistive load across the secondary coil now we don't get a lot of power out of it because firstly it's an air core coil secondly I only have about 50 turns um, of secondary coil wrapped around about 800 turns of primary coil so um, or what a, however many turns it is it works out to about 80 ohms resistance so um, quite high due to the fact that it's a primary out of a 240 volt transformer but um, good enough to see the effects we can achieve with this little setup here <coughs> and one of them is we're going to see something that I have never seen before um, we're actually going to shift the secondary's current ahead of that of the primary's current um, simply by making small adjustments to the frequency which will either pull this um, closer or further away from absolute resonance so it's obviously still in uh, resonance at the moment if it's not it would stop um, but it's not at its peak resonant amplitude um, because the frequency is slightly out but um, still close enough to cause correct oscillations we just get a lower amplitude so um, what we're going to do is raise the frequency um, by about uh, 0.7 of a hertz and we're going to see the effect that that has um, of the between the current relationships of the primary and secondary coil so I'll uh, switch the camera off we'll get you set up in front of the um, scope and our signal generator and we can watch the effect this will be operating all the time as it is there at the moment okay so um, hopefully now you can see the scope and our um, frequency generator or signal generator um, I found this one here for some reason the um, frequency on channel 1 or the scope reading channel 1's frequency is a little more accurate than channel 2 frequency that we are triggering from for some reason um, 39.269 um, is much closer to the 39.27 that we are delivering from our signal generator than the uh, 40.117 which um, drops up and down <clears throat> but nonetheless you'll get the general idea um, what's going on so the yellow trace at the moment is showing us our primary current 
uh, secondary current, sorry. Yellow trace is secondary current um, across that 5 ohm resistor and the blue trace is our primary current through that 3 ohm resistor. So what we're going to do now is I'll slowly wind the um, what I'm going to do now is get rid of this chair before I fall over it. I'll slowly increase the frequency um, and like I said we'll be going from point 0.27 up and to about uh, 0.87 so we're going to be raising the frequency by 0.6 of a hertz so um, not very much indeed so as we can see here our secondary current is about 90 degrees out very close to the primary current which is what it should be um, in a normal transformer situation and we are talking current and current we are not talking secondary EMF so um, once again the yellow trace is our secondary current across that uh, well the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor which is showing us our current flow through the secondary coil and of course our 3 ohm resistor is showing us the uh, voltage drop across that resistor on channel 2. Okay so we're going to slowly increase our frequency and we're going up by 0 0.01 of a hertz at a time. So 39.28, 0.29, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20
Um, now we have 200 millivolts across that 5 ohm resistor and um, the current has dropped down to 88 millivolts across our 3 ohm resistor on the uh, primary coil. As I've shown before the voltage stays very close to the same. Well it did actually until I increase the frequency. Now I do get a slight voltage variation um, across the primary. Um, that is when I drop the current down to the primary uh, the voltage increases across the primary but uh, not by much. So anyway that's what I wanted to show in this video. Um, we can now control the phase relationship of the secondary to the primary current simply by making small adjustments to the frequency of the oscillator which I thought was pretty cool. I've never actually seen um, the secondary's current on a transformer lead that of the primary's current. But of course we have an external um, what could be considered now an external source uh, working on the secondary coil but um, I'm a little lost as to how the source that is being provided the energy by the primary um, can induce a current across the secondary before it receives that energy from the primary. might be due to uh, stored energy in the um, oscillator itself or perhaps even the magnet. There you go. Um, like I said, we change the frequency only by 0.6 of a hertz. So um, hardly any change at all. That makes a very di big difference um, as to where the secondary phase, current phase, is in relation to the primary's current phase. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, this was just a little experiment for some of the guys on the forum that are following this. So, um, sort of make up a quick video showing it. Some wanted to see it. And uh, there it is. That's how it's done. Cheers, guys.